All right, well, there's some potential here, I'm not going to lie. And if this is how he's looking now, I'm already invested into what augments Corvex will be getting down the line. Now, mind you, he's definitely not the strongest of the releases that we've had recently, but he's nowhere near the bottom and has a pretty fun concept. So let's have a deeper look at what he offers. As always, timestamps added. Beginning where all things should, let's break down his kit, starting off with his passive. Any equipped weapons will receive a plus three punch through in the hands of Corvex. And I won't lie, this isn't super interesting as a passive, but it's quality of life, and it does synergize with his control-styled abilities. Either way, it's nowhere near the worst, so we'll definitely take it. Kovic's first ability is Chirinka Pillar. Kovic will go and smash down a radioactive pillar in which staggers nearby enemies with eruption. The pillar will then pulse out radiation damage and status, whilst also slowing enemies that enter its controlling zone. Kovic can actually place two of these pillars down, one after the other, to increase that surface affected area and if you didn't know radiation is a status that basically confuses enemies to attack whoever is next to them no detection from friend or foes this is a good distraction tool to stop you from being the target Chirinka pillar is also the ability that can be fed to the helmet for other warframes to subsume into their kits Kovic's second ability is Containment Wall. In a line in front of him, Kovic smashes together closing walls in which inflict radiation damage to enemies inside, but also adds a damage vulnerability to them. This is a debuff, which means all sources of incoming damage deals more damage to them whilst this debuff has been applied to the enemy. And guys, I'll be honest here. As much as I visually think this ability is stunning and something Atlas should have had, I don't think it's that great of an ability. So in terms of group-related abilities that already exist, exist in the game, it's a bit of a lackluster one, although it does synergize with his fourth. The damage vulnerability is considered quite low, especially when I browsed around at other Warframes such as Yureli, Najjar, and Sephagoth as examples, and therefore I believe that this would be the ability to remove from your kit and make room for new abilities and subsume. It's just my personal opinion. Kovic's third ability is Disometric Guards. And boy, oh boy, this ability I sorely misunderstood at first. You see, it was briefly mentioned during a dev stream that when this ability was activated, it would protect you from certain statuses that enemies could apply to you, like Knockdown and Magnetic. However, it's actually all 13 usual statuses within Warframe. At least, that's what I've tested and I can confirm. So not only does it stop all of these elements from just procking on you, but this ability, when cast, can also go to any team who is within affinity range too. This is such a great protective tool in squads, getting any kills or assists to enemies that are affected by radiation status will also help you regenerate and build up the stacks. A quick tip here, when casting disometric guards, the first cast will always give you half the amount of total stacks. So if you cast the ability twice, you will go ahead and get your full amount of stacks ready to go. Lastly, Corvex's fourth ability is Crucible Blast. Corvex releases a beam from within his core dealing radiation damage with 100% proc status applied. Enemies who are affected by radiation will begin to explode in a chain reaction which can last like a dot. This ability's damage is pretty good and the explosion radius is quite generous at a base of 8 meters in which can further scale off range. What's more important about this is that this ability also empowers Corvex's first ability Chiring Capilla. So in order to get the most out of his first ability, you'll be wanting to keep his fourth ability synergized together in his kit at all times. Alrighty, now that we understand that, let's have a little look at some builds. So for build number one, we're gonna go with what fits in this kit absolutely perfectly. You see, Corvex does good damage, but when paired with armor strip or shield strip, he does great damage. However, besides from the high innate health and armor, he doesn't really have great survival. Well, enter in Hildren's Pillage ability. This is a blend of offense and defense that fits into his kit, filling that hole that was left. Since Pillage requires a lot of strength to help it reach its full strip potential, and since literally all of Corvex's abilities also scale off strength, it makes it the best stat to invest into overall. From there, the quality of life that Modern for Range brings is just too good to not go ahead and mod for. So we went with that next to back up and pair with the damage that he already has. And it's to note, the only ability that scales off duration in this kit is his first, and it has a base of 35 seconds, which is way more than enough. So even if you hurt your duration a little bit, you'd still have a good 20 seconds or more to play around with. 
This build here is my Roman build. His overall kit is fantastic for zone control, don't get me wrong, but this gives him room to roam wherever he pleases with full status immunity and shield gate in protection to back him up. And if you do need to set up and hold an area whilst on this build, his first and fourth can come into play, giving him quite an all-rounded kit. We'll quickly mention that for efficiency in this build, it's up to you how you want to work with it. For me, I did the usual combination of Prime Flow meets Equilibrium meets Arcane Energize meets Death Cube Companion in which can help drop energy and health orbs, giving me great sustainability if I need it. If you cannot do that, work with whatever you have, and if you need to, slap on Xenuric Focus School to go and help you out. The Arcanes are somewhat flexible to what you have access to, but mostly Strength Arcanes like Mo Augmented are here to help reach that full armor strip with corrosive projection, whilst also countering and cancelling out that overextended mod that we applied in there for free. From there, you can basically go and pop in either energy or weapon arcanes if you can fit any of those in, since they also synergize with what you're doing. Ability rotations for build number one. So I'll keep this part short because I've already briefly explained what I would do in the build showcase part before, but basically this is my Roman build. So I like to go ahead and make sure that my disymmetric guard is up and applied first. From there, go ahead and get some energy into your pool, however means necessary, maybe a couple of kills, and then just pillage away. Depending on what your strength levels are, you will either armor strip straight off of the bat, or you're going to need to go and build up your mole augmented first. In this build, I need to go and build it up. We don't really have to worry about the full armor strip straight off of the bat, it's just good quality of life to have it. We're now going into fights with full status immunity and pillage shield survival to keep us alive, so we don't really need that many problems, and we could go pick off enemies with our weaponry. As mentioned, if you do find an area to set up, this build can become quite a great zone control one too, as with the huge amount of range that we have, we can place our Chai Ranker pillars down, pulsing out radiation procs, confusing enemies. Then, we can combo that with his Crucible Blast, blasting into the pillars to empower their damage and frequency, and then finally, you guessed it, pillage. Yep, they're all armor stripped and dead. So for build number two, we wanted a bit more of a zone control focus. And after messing around with all of the helmet subsumes, we came to one that works really well in synergy. It is extremely satisfying to use, and it does a great job in terms of clearing ads from the map. We popped in Wisp's Breach Surge ability, which creates even more chain when paired and comboed with Corvex's first and fourth ability, more so on his fourth ability in particular. So that means range becomes our most important stat here. The quality of life is hugely noticeable, especially depending on which faction and which tile set you're facing. The pillars do require a line of sight and don't go pulsing damage through terrain like build and some walls. Please go ahead and keep that in mind. So you want to be a little open to where you stand, but also closed enough that enemies are still trying to get to you from only one open direction. Strength comes in next up in our damage output. Again, it works great with Corvex, and Breach Surge also loves a little bit of strength too. Since this build is more focused on Chai Ring Capilla, going for duration is a good call, but as mentioned earlier, you don't really need a tremendous amount. But if you do need some extra duration, a cheeky little tip here is to pair this with the new Grimoire Mage Book, which gives you an extra 60% duration to your Warframe's abilities. So if you aren't already using a secondary weapon, then slap this into your loadout and enjoy the increased timers from it. I will admit here, guys, that I mostly tested and played this build solo, and I had to fill in the blanks to help the build have more give. But I need to stress this part as important. If you run this build with a support who can generate you energy or buffs, or even pair this build with another player running armor strip or shield strip debuffing, capabilities, this build will definitely shine way better in a group environment than on your own. Because unfortunately, you will meet a time limit where this build falls off, and when factoring in single target enemies like Eximus and Acolytes, you will actually need your weapons to go and deal with them instead of your abilities. Ability rotations for build number two. As always, Corvex loves to kick things off with Disymmetric Guards. There's absolutely no harm in having that extra backup if you want it applied. So from there, I want to go and build up some energy, and I usually do that by a couple of kills, and then I look for a location to set up my Chai Rinka pillars. If you're in defense-like missions, it's best to go and stack them next to the target. But if you're in a survival-like mission, then find a good choke point and set your build up. So now that you're all set up and you're pulsing out those red procs, 
cast your Breach Surge ability to debuff and blind the enemies, creating more control for yourself on the battlefield, and finally create your fireworks. Ignite those pillars with your Crucible Blast ability and watch from a safe distance with your safety goggles applied. Remember kids, safety first. Archon Shards. Update 35 The Whispers in the Wall has given us access to even more Archon Shard types. However, I'm bringing this build to you quite early so I can only use what I already have access to. Two times Amber Shards for cast speed increases and then finishing it off with three times Crimson Shards for overall strength increases. Now, there is a new Topaz Shards in which is a combination of both Crimson and Amber Shards fused together. In this section, we can see a Radiation Ability increase, which I think would also be a good shard to give him. Either way, the whole idea of Archon Shards are more about equip what you have because they're kind of limited and they're new. So this is roughly what I would do though if he was looking for a min-max return. Guys, I am genuinely enjoying Corvex so far. I mean, he's not super overpowered, but he doesn't really need to be. In terms of visuals and aesthetics, he's very pleasing to play. And if you're a sucker for zone-controlled builds, then this is definitely a Warframe I can recommend for you to try yourself. Alrighty then, it's about that time. Thank you guys for watching today's video. A reminder that if you did, hit the like button or share the video with a friend in order to go and help support the channel. If you're new, come subscribe, but as always, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.